Hello, my name is Devin Lang. I'm a PhD student at the University of Utah and a current member of the Visualization Design Lab. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Ferret, our recent work to help uh, review tabular datasets for manipulation. And in particular, this video is going to focus on a specific case study of the, the tool. So to begin, let me give a quick overview of the interface. On the left-hand side, we have a number of analyses. Each one of these analyses is designed to help highlight um, patterns that, that indicate that data may have been manipulated. In the top middle portion of the screen, we include a description that describes the, the, visual, uh, the visualizations as well as what to look for and um, caveats to keep in mind. Since I'm going through the demo, I'm going to hide these descriptions so we have more space for our main view, which is the, the tabular visualization. Um, a quick overview for the data that we're looking at in this case study. This is associated with a paper that has been retracted, in particular experiment number three. And the way this experiment is described in the paper uh, is that the researchers worked with an uh, insurance company and uh, recorded, asked people to record their odometer reading of their car, how many miles that car had driven. Then after some period had elapsed, the paper didn't go into details for exactly what, what period of time. After this period of time elapsed, the, the uh, owners of the vehicles were asked to report their odometer reading again. And since each row here is an actual insurance policy, there can be up to four cars on it, but most of the uh, policies only have a single car listed. For each car, there is a previous column, the odometer at the beginning of this period, and an update column, the, the odometer reading after this period has elapsed. So with that, let's talk about why some of these cells are highlighted in blue and some are white. Um, if you hover over a cell, it explains all of the formatting, things like um, the font and font size. And these things are what drive the, uh, the, 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 the formatting that you see on the screen. So we see that there are 20,000 cells that have a font size of 12 and, are, and have a font of Cambria. However, most of the cells are actually in Calibri font. So already we can see in this first column, uh, there's this sort of strange mix of these two different fonts throughout the data. And we can switch to uh, an overview mode that lets us view many, many columns at once. And if we scroll through our data set, we can see that, that this pattern continues throughout the, the 13,000 rows or so, where there's this mix of these two fonts in this column. This column, uh, the uh, odometer reading one update is all Cambria, and then the rest appear to be Calibri. So let me quickly go back to the top of this list. And I'm going to now sort by the values within this column. And here, once we do this, new patterns emerge. So instead of this, this random mixing of these two fonts, the first thing we can notice is that uh, every single value of zero within this region is going to be in this Calibri font, right? There are, there, so there's uh, our first difference between the values in Calibri and Cambria. Similarly, if we look at the next range of numbers close to a thousand, right? This period between uh, 600 and rough 500 and a thousand, um, is not entirely in this blue font, but it is uh, mostly this, this blue font. Now, if we continue down, we have more of a, a mixing of fonts, so to speak. But you may notice, uh, if you look carefully, that there are some regions that have larger consecutive chunks of white font. So, for instance, here, 
And here are fairly large chunks of this white font, uh, but we don't see the same thing with the blue fonts. So if we look at the actual values in those regions, what we see is that they are these round numbers. So 37,000, 38,000, um, and 40,000. And interestingly, the, the rounder the number, the larger this chunk is. So between these, these numbers, 40,000 is the, the biggest. So if you're looking at data that has been self-reported, like odometer readings reported by owners of the vehicle, it's not unusual for there to be this sort of rounding effect. Instead of looking at the actual reading, they just estimate and go with the, the, the closest number that's reasonable. So that by itself is not unusual. Um, but if we look at the data, we do not see that same rounding effect in the blue font. So again, here, there's a, a difference in the data within a single column between these two fonts. OK, moving on um, to the other extreme of the data. If we move to the largest values within this column, we see a new pattern. And I can click and drag to highlight many rows at once. And now we can see this interesting pattern where values alternate between this blue font and this white font, Calabria and Cambria. And furthermore, we see pairings of numbers. So the largest two numbers in the data set 982,000 and 983,000 are within 1,000 miles of each other. And then the next two closest also share this pattern. And if you go one by one, you see this for every single pattern here, where every single, excuse me, pair here, where the two values are within 1,000 miles of each other. And in fact, um, if you look at the, the second, third, fourth cars on the policy for po insurance policies that have more than one car, you see the same pattern, right? These two odometers are within 1,000 miles. These two are within 1,000 miles, um, and so on. So there is a bit of a strange uh, uh, pattern of, of, of matching values at this tail end of the distribution. OK, so I'm going to move on to our next analysis here. So I will skip the value distribution and go to the duplicate numbers. This, uh, and I'm going to just make this a little bit larger here to make it easier to see. This analysis is showing values that are duplicated within a single column. So for odometer reading one, previous, we can see that the most duplicated numbers are, again, these very round numbers, right? 60,000 was duplicated 10 times. In other words, there were, excuse me, 30 times. There were 30 cars within this data set that ha reported a, an odometer of 60,000 miles. Uh, on the other hand, the second column, the odometer reading after some time has passed, the update column, you do not see these round numbers, and the, the uh, amount of duplicates are much high, lower, 3 instead of 30, for instance. For the second car, um, the values of 0 actually, in this case, correspond to not having a second car but we can ignore those values actually in any column. And with those ignored, we see the same pattern for the second car. The previous has round numbers, many duplicates. The updated does not have round numbers, no duplicates. So again, there seems to be some difference um, between these columns for the previous column and the update column. Now, we see the same type of rounding effect in the replicate analysis and the duplicate digit analysis. But I'm going to uh, skip to the, the trailing digits, which shows this 
perhaps the most clearly. Right, this uh, chart is looking at the, the relative frequency of the last digits of numbers. So again, for the first column, you can see that 20% roughly of the numbers end with a zero, and then the rest are uniform, compared to the update where all of the values are uniform. And again, we see the same pattern uh, in the second, third, fourth cars. So the last thing I'm going to switch to is this last analysis listed here for checking your domain expectations. Um, and this provides a, a collection of different visualizations to help you analyze your data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in our odometer reading one for the previous and update. This is what we've been looking at, and this is going to plot a scatter plot. So if I um, reduce the opacity here, and let me reset this actually. Great, so now that we have this, I want to just point out a couple quick things. The bottom axis is the previous, and the top axis, the y-axis, is the, the update. So to read this, if you look at you know, a point right here. That means the car started with 200,000 miles and then didn't drive at all. At the end of this time period, it was still at 200,000 miles. So in other words, everything on this sort of uh, line at the bottom of this boundary are all cars that drove zero miles or very close to zero miles. So it's good we don't see anything below this because um, those would all indicate uh, negative miles driven. On the other hand, if we look at this top line, right, we can look at, for instance, this point. This is a car that started with uh, a dominant reading of zero, drove 50,000 miles, and then at the end of the study, it drove 50, uh, yeah, it had 50,000 miles greater on its odometer. So everything on this upper line are cars that drove 50,000 miles. So given the, the number of cars, roughly 15,000 total, um, and the, the, the density there, it is a bit strange to see this very abrupt cutoff with so many cars driving close to 50,000 miles, but no cars driving you know, 51,000 miles or, or any, any, any value greater. OK, so that concludes the, the abbreviated version of this case study. If you're interested in learning more about the tool, check out the paper. Thank you very much.